Hey guys, it's Jamie here, back to do some more of our flip book challenge. I think it's page six, I'm losing track now. I have here a napkin and what I'm going to do is separate out the top layer. Put this one to one side because I tend to use this for other things. What I have here is some tissue paper. So when people have been making pretend vellum or glassine, they've been doing it straight onto here, which you can do. Try doing it onto tissue paper to see if that helps stabilize things. And I'm covering the tracing paper, place it on here. I'm going to leave that to dry before doing a top layer of Mod Podge over that. What we would now do is put a layer on the top which will make it more flexible and material-like. Set that to one side to dry. This one is definitely stiff enough to be able to be made into an envelope. Lengthwise, in looking at that sort of length, because we want to keep these clear and that sort of width. Let's cut one straight line, the width first, and then trim up all around. With what's left, we can create a bit of a gusset so that the envelope has more space. To do that, using some of the spare and the length of the side, what we will do is we will put in three lines. Two about a centimeter or half an inch from the edge and we're scoring these in between our two lines roughly halfway using the halfway one first which was there we fold it over and then we fold the two others that are at the sides towards us Those two are where you would attach glue or sew. So if I can show you on this one, you would put it against that edge and that edge, and then you have an expandable pocket. Because I want to sew along this edge, I will only lightly glue on one side, let that dry and then sew along that edge. To glue it, you are going to need your silicone glue or your Fabri-Tac glue. Do the same on the other side. The front is now all sewn down. The back we are simply gluing to the back of the envelope. Before I do that, I want to shape the fold over. To do that I'm going to fold it in half. Something vaguely fanciful makes our envelope front. Should I shape the back as well? No. We'll stick some lace or something over that. First things first, let's glue these two pieces to the back. Clip it while it dries, especially at the important stress points, which is going to be the top. Make sure, because that glue was everywhere, that the pocket is free of glue. I found this piece of gold neck curtaining that I think goes with this. So to cover up that little bit showing, we need the silicon style glue. Here's what's been done. The lace backing's gone on here. The top has had lace added to it with an extra piece of lace and sewn around. I want to put a closure on this. For this closure, I'm going to use the Velcro dots and I will be putting them on in a similar manner as to the way that we did the magnets. Put one roughly in the center, squish it down, put the connecting one on it, bring the lid over, lid, I don't know what you'd call it, what would you call it, fold, push it down, pull them apart, 
make sure they're both fully on and now we have a little velcro dot closure and because this is napkin on tracing paper it's strong enough to cope with that velcro dot closure it's not going to tear it which it sometimes does with paper the backing onto the card and this one is going on the back of the waterfall pocket the waterfall pocket is that way up therefore the back is holes at the bottom we've still got some of these papers which were cut to size i might pull one over to the side then have the doily then have that on top i don't know because that's not very strong by itself or whether the doily should be protected by being on here maybe have it that way have the envelope in that top left hand corner and obviously this would all be trimmed up i decided to stain the doily with some vintage photo very very lightly this seems a little blank perhaps a word or phrase at the bottom to fit this area how lucky am i i did some basic tag cutting the other day and these perfectly fit the little pocket envelope that we've just done. What I have here is scraps, including scraps of paper. Usual thing, collaging it all on without much care or attention. Not worrying about the fact this is black. On the reverse side, we'll stick down some paper that you can write on without needing a white gel pen. I'm gonna go with this timetable or ticket or whatever it is, that one tiny little thing there i do have some stamps somewhere i've got some from india we go nice proper stamp there looking for a central piece that will fit i will edge it actually with black not vintage photo because i want to give it a border i couldn't decide whether i wanted to edge it in vintage photo or black to match the black fading and edging i did on the big flower picture i ended up going with vintage photo and i'm a little undecided as to whether that works this will be backed with some coffee stained paper or some note paper of some sort i will be doing a second and maybe even a third tag in a very very similar way to the way you've just seen me do tag one these are now finished and backed with coffee stained paper so they are all good to go into the pocket envelope i did say this bit looked a bit bare and i'm thinking of doing a name plate i have some gold acrylic paint here and i am going to put this over the black probably a couple of coats but i am actually going to sand it back and stain it and maybe use a bronze as well and generally play with the color I think this is great, but it doesn't go with the color scheme. This is for another part of this book. I'm not getting rid of it, I will use it. I think what I will do is run some lace, punch some holes, and then pop the word down. I'm going to call it a day on this page. I think it would have been better if the napkin I had used had been less bright and more in keeping with the general tones. At the bottom, I ended up adding some crochet, which has been coffee stained, and a small piece of lace, a different style to any of the other lace that's been used. I moved the word calm to this side and stained it down with some vintage photo. And you have obviously your journaling cards that will go into this deeper pocket i hope you've enjoyed this video and are progressing with the challenge i will be back with the next tutorial very very soon if you are on youtube please do all the youtubey things like share subscribe comment join the facebook group details are in the video description and i will see you next time bye